Modeling the Motions of Earth. If I asked you to go outside tonight and look outside on a clear night and observe the night sky, this is what you would see. You would see the motion of the moon, the stars, maybe some planets. As you watch their positions over time, they appear to move across the sky. And as we discussed, this is called apparent daily motion. Apparent daily motion states that celestial objects, our stars, our planets, the moon, and the sun appear to move across the sky each day at a rate of 15 degrees per hour. Turns out that Plato, a 4th century mathematician, Aristotle, a 3rd century uh, philosopher and also astronomer, and Ptolemy, a Greek astronomer who followed Aristotle and Plato, came up with our first functioning model of the universe based on apparent daily motion. And here's that model. Their model suggests that Earth is at the center of the universe and all other objects are revolving around Earth. This model is called the geocentric model. In this model, Earth is stationary and lies in the center and is not moving. All other celestial objects orbit it. When we think about apparent daily motion, that, that fits, that works, that makes sense. You can see how Plato, Aristotle, and Ptolemy came up with that theory from looking at the night sky. Ptolemy created a very detailed model shown here to explain how the Earth made no motion at all, was completely still, and all of the other planets and objects in our solar system were moving around it. Um, if you watch some of the planets that are slowly circling as they orbit the Earth, this was Ptolemy's way of explaining retrograde motion, a motion that was early in the theories of the solar system and universe, but could not be understood and described. His best thinking was that all the planets were making their own tiny little orbits in their own circles as they orbited the Earth. That was the best he could do. Um, it doesn't show the planets past Saturn because at that time uh, they had not discovered any planets further than that. And the stars aren't pictured but also fit into the model as revolving around the Earth. Most important about this model is that Ptolemy suggested that the Earth was perfect. It was a perfect sphere. It didn't move. It didn't change. And because God created it that way, it was perfect with no imperfections. This was a widely accepted theory for about a thousand years until Copernicus, uh, pictured here, observed the night sky and formulated a radical view that would change society's view of the solar system. And roughly around the same time, Galileo Galilei was working with the first telescope in Italy to observe the phases of the moon. Without working together directly, both of these astronomers created a new model that went against the geocentric model. This model became known as the heliocentric model. And in this model, the sun lies in the center and other celestial objects, including Earth, orbit it. In this model, Earth both rotates and revolves. So this was a sun-centered model of our solar system. And instead of orbiting in perfect circles as suggested by the geocentric model, and then also put together by Copernicus, um, Kepler concluded that the orbits were ellipses or oval-shaped. And Isaac Newton, working in a separate part of Europe, was able to put together um, an improvement to the heliocentric theory that demonstrated how all of the planets in our solar system were held together by a universal law of gravitation. 